Good morning, everyone. My name is Jessie, and um, that was a bit heavy, a bit dark, but I promise by the time I'm finished talking, I'm going to tell you something good and great. So I just want to start with a little bit of prayer. So if you want to take some time, close your eyes. If you've got your own prayer you want to say in your heart, please do that. But I'm going to pray for us all. Um, dear God, thank you so much for the blessing of this day and that we can gather and hear your word. Lord, I pray that you will speak to us and through us and help us make good choices that follow your word. Amen. So, today we're going to be talking about how God's good is best. And I'm going to be talking through a lot of Bible verses. So, I hope that is okay. I have a fair few to share with you today. And the first one is Colossians 3.17a, which says, everything you say and everything you do should all be done for Jesus, your Lord. So, that is our verse for this series. And um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about what that means. Now, I do have something to admit. I had planned to talk about something totally different, but then I read another verse in the Bible and it changed everything I was going to talk to. So this might be a little bit higgledy-piggledy as my brain gets through it. Now, the story of Adam and Eve, the whole... So today's title's about who is to blame when it comes to good and bad choices that we make. So the story of Adam and Eve, God made Adam and Eve, these two perfect people that lived with him, and God helped them live in this beautiful world that had everything they could want. It was amazing. They had food. They had these beautiful trees, this amazing place, a wonderful waterfall, all the animals. They lived peacefully together. There was no pain there was no sadness, there was no jealousy, there was just joy and wonderful living. They were all rested, it was fantastic. And then one day, when Eve was walking through the forest, she came across a tree. And she remembered what God had said to her, and God had said, you can eat from any tree that you want in this whole garden except one, the one in the middle that the fruit would give you the knowledge of good and evil. So as Eve was walking through, she came across this tree and she's like, yep, no, I know not to eat that one. But out of the tree slivered a serpent who said to you, said to Eve, did God really say you can't eat from this tree? She's like, oh, that you can't eat from the trees in the forest? No, she said, no, 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 we can eat from anyone, just not this one. He said, but why? Well, God said that we'd die. Oh, no. No, you won't die. You will just know all that God knows. Oh, okay, cool. Why don't you eat from the tree? And she thought, and she thought, okay, well, it does look good. And if God really loves me, surely he would want me to know what he knows. So she took it and she ate it. Now, my question to you is, whose choice was that? Who chose to eat from that tree? Did the serpent choose or did he tempt her and she made the choice? So Eve then took it and she took a bite. Oh, nothing happened. Okay. So she took it over to Adam and she said, Adam, have a bite of this fruit. It will help us know what God knows. And Adam knew it was wrong, but he took it and he took a bite But whose choice was that? Did Eve make him do it or did Adam choose to do it? So Adam chose that choice. So we're all going to be tempted, but we need to make a choice whether we're going to follow that temptation or not. So they ate it and then God came in the garden and he said, Oh, I know that something is not right. And Adam said, Oh, she made me do it. She told me I had to eat the apple. And so God turned to Eve and said, hmm. And Eve said, no, 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 the serpent made me do it. And everyone began to blame everyone else because for every choice that we make, there is a consequence. 
and they didn't want to hold that consequence. Because when we took a bite of that fruit, when Adam and Eve took a bite of that fruit, they became aware of what was good and what was evil, and they then had to make a choice. Before they took a bite of that fruit, God made that choice for them. He helped them. He showed them what was good. But after that, they had to make a choice, and they had to own that choice. You can't make a choice and expect someone else to carry the consequences. So, my next thing is, all right, now we are so many generations past Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. There have been babies and more babies and more babies and more babies, and we are the babies of those babies, 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 babies. And we are still living in a world where we need to make choices about what we think is good and what is bad. Has anyone ever been asked to make a good choice? Have you ever been in school and the teacher said to you, oh, you better make a good choice? Have you ever been at home and mum or dad or your aunt or grandma or your guardian has said, you know what the good choice is here? All right. Or you better make a good choice about what you do next. We've all been asked to make good choices. But my question to you is, what is a good choice really? And you don't need to answer me, but maybe just think about that. Now comes the verse that made me change what I was going to talk about today. So this morning, I was reading my Bible, and I was reading Colossians, which happens to be the book I'm reading through at the moment. And I came across this verse in chapter 2, verse 7. And just to summarize it a little bit for you, because it's quite a long verse and there's lots to it. It basically said, you have been set free by Jesus, so why do you continue to make choices based on what people think is good? So when we took a bite of that fruit, we became able to decide what is good and what is evil. So why do we continue to make choices about what people think is good just because it makes us fit in with everyone else? So in order to, um, so it makes us fit in with everyone else. Making those choices doesn't help us be who God intended us to be. It just helps us fit in with the people around us. So there is a difference between a good choice and a God choice. A good choice might mean and makes us feel good in the moment, all right? It might be that, oh, we keep quiet about something we know is true in the Bible just because we don't want to upset someone Or we make a choice about, you know, following a rule just because it makes everyone else happy, even though we know inside us that, oh, I don't know if that's what God would want me to do. Or we keep quiet about injustice or when someone else is being hurt. Or we don't stand up to someone who's being mean just because we don't want to hurt someone else's feelings or we don't want to be that person who stands up and is set aside by everyone else. We're making the human choice, not the God choice. So I have a few things for us to help us know the difference between a world choice, a human choice, and a God choice. So the first thing we need to think about on whether we're making a God choice is, does this show who God is? God is love. God is faithfulness. God is kindness. God is generosity. So when we are making a choice, we need to ask ourselves, is this choice love? Is this choice kindness? Is this choice showing faithfulness to God? Is this choice generous? Even if it's not what the world would say it is. The next thing is, does this choice follow God's word? Does it come from the Bible? Is it truth? And then the final thing is we pray and we listen in our heart to what God is saying to us. Or we can pray with and talk to someone we trust from God's family. That might be a parent or a guardian 
or someone from church. It might be a leader from here and we can talk to them about the choice that we are struggling with. So those are things to help us know whether it's a God choice or a human choice. And whatever choice we do make, we need to understand that we are going to have to wear the consequences. You need to own your choice. By eating the fruit, Adam and Eve became responsible for their choices. They needed to own the consequence of their choices. And that is what it meant by, by eating the fruit, it, you would die. That is owning our choice. So when you make a choice, you need to own that consequence. Sometimes making what we think is a good human choice by not standing up and telling the truth or whatever it is, we might feel good for a little moment, but then inside we start feeling a little bit yucky because we know maybe we should have stood up and spoken up to that person. Or maybe we should have told that person that what they're saying isn't true. Or maybe we should have given the last dollar of our pocket money to that person who needed, needed it most. So sometimes when we make a choice that we think, ooh, maybe it feels good now, but we'll feel a bit later. Sometimes when we make a God choice, it might feel really uncomfortable in the moment. It can be scary to stand up and say the truth. But as you go on, you can feel strong inside yourself that you have followed God's word and it actually feels good because God will reward us for doing the right thing. But here comes the good news. Who in this room is perfect? No one. We might like to think that we're perfect and we always make the right choices and we always do the right thing. But the reality is we're going to make mistakes. The reality is sometimes we're not going to make the right choice because sometimes knowing what the God choice is is really, really hard because the good choice can look like the God choice because it feels right in the moment. It's so hard sometimes and we're going to make mistakes and there's going to be consequences. Sometimes we're going to make the God choice and it's actually going to bite us in the bottom because it's going to mean that that person that we were just going along with and agreeing with because we wanted to be their friend and when we stood up to them, they don't want to be our friend anymore. Sometimes there's going to be hard consequences for making the God choice. But the reality is there is someone in there out there who loves us no matter what choices we make and this is where we are set free Jesus died on the cross for us that no matter what choices we make he loves us and here is my final verse for you today let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. That is from Colossians. God loves you so much that no matter what choice you make, he is going to stand in the gap. And while we have to live with the consequences, God will be there to help us through. All right, I'm going to invite Adam back up and we are going to pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the blessing of today and thank you that you have stepped in the gap and you are there to help us make God choices. You are there when we make the wrong choice, when we choose the human way. You are there to help us through the consequences and that no matter what choice we make, how good or how bad, you are there to help us through and you have given us this church family to support us through everything. Amen.